Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. This is the second bonus video on the subject of enhancing our email server by introducing server name identification and virtual mailboxes. In this video, we'll be looking at server name identification or SNI, which allows us to have more than one email domain on the same IP address and therefore on the same email server. This is what will open the door to you being able to use a Raspberry Pi to act as an entire hosting platform, not just for one domain, but for as many as you like. So let's get going. Very briefly, as always, I'd like to mention my Patreon account. If you'd like to get access to videos long before they get released on YouTube, or if you would like to suggest content, get one-to-one -one support with me relating to this course or support my work, please do visit my Patreon account. Okay, so we've covered this slide in the previous video, but I just want to run over a few bits in here before we head over to my desktop. The reason is I want to be absolutely clear on what we're going to achieve in this video using server name identification. So server name identification is going to allow us, as mentioned, have more than one domain on the same IP address for our emails. And this technology was introduced into Postfix in 2020, so it's quite a recent addition. And until then, it wasn't possible with Postfix to host more than one domain on the same IP address in this way. Now, the directory structure that you can see on this slide is actually made possible by using virtual mailboxes. So I want to be clear that server name identification isn't going to produce this directory structure that we're seeing, but it is going to lay the groundwork to allow us to have more than one domain and therefore make the most of the virtual mailbox structure. Okay, now to progress with this video, you'll need to be aware of some assumptions that I'm making. So I make the assumption that you have followed this course through to this point. By that I mean you have a working email server using your Linux user accounts for the email accounts with the mail stored in MailDeer format in your user's home directories. It's important that this assumption is true because in these next few videos, we're going to be modifying an existing setup rather than showing how to do this from scratch. I'm also assuming that if you have another domain to hand, that you have set up the DNS settings for that domain, ideally in Cloudflare, but actually in any DNS provider will do. Now this should be done exactly the same as how you set up the settings for your existing primary domain as per this video series. Finally, I also assume that if you do have another domain, you have created new keys, so a new a private key, in the same way that you did for your first domain as per this video series. If you haven't done these two things, you'll need to do them before you go any further, but they should be quite easy for you now, and once done, you're ready to go. Okay, so enough talk, let's go over to my desktop and I'll show you what we need to do to change our existing Raspberry Pi setup to allow us to host more than one domain on the same Raspberry Pi. Okay, so here I am on my desktop as normal, ready to SSH into my Raspberry Pi 4. I will now SSH in using my SSH alias Pi 4 as standard as normal. SSH, Pi 4, enter. There we go. So we're going to start making our changes in the main configuration file for Postfix. So if you've been following this video series along, this is a very familiar file. Now, most of our changes are going to be related to the keys for authenticating our emails for our domains. The main difference is that we're going to need a key for each domain we intend to host. So in the example I will be showing, I have access to two domains. One I own myself, singleentity.com, and one a colleague of mine owns, utilizeme.com and I'm going to be authenticating both of them. So to follow along properly, you will need to have two or more domains already to hand. However, if you don't, don't worry, you can still set the system up ready for when you do get more than one domain, so it will work fine. I know I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it one more time. It's very important to remember that if you are going to have more than one domain, you must ensure that you have DNS settings pointing for that domain to your home router as well. So please refer back to my videos from earlier in the series where we set up the DNS settings, or just ensure 
you copy all of the DNS settings from your existing domain onto your new domain in Cloudflare and update some of the records accordingly. OK, so let's get started. Let's edit the main configuration file for Postfix as follows. sudo to elevate our permissions, nano, which is our nano text editor, and then forward slash etc, forward slash postfix, forward slash main.cf, and press enter. Now, the first thing I'll say is this configuration file will, and indeed all of the configuration files, may or will look different to how they appeared in the video series to date. That's because I'm showing you my actual email server that I use. So the settings may be a little bit different, but what you need to do should still be quite evident. I'm showing you a working email server. OK, so what we need to do is we need to change how the SMTP TLS key and certificate files are defined here in the postfix main configuration file. So we're going to comment out the SMTPD TLS certificate and TLS key file lines as you can see, I have done here. And then we're going to add two additional lines to replace them. So you should find these lines in your file already and you need to comment them out. OK. Now, firstly, we're going to add a line which is going to replace the key and certificate file lines we've just uncommented, we've just commented, sorry, we've just commented out, as you can see here. So this is our new line we're going to be adding. OK, so you can see in my case, I've copied both of these paths from the original two lines down onto this line and they are comma separated here and a space. So there's a comma and a space between the two. So we've got the private key dot PEM and we've got the full chain dot PEM. These are the same as what is up here, but we've just moved them down onto the same line and we've we're using the parameter smtpd underscore tls underscore chain underscore files instead. OK, so that's the difference. We've simply commented these out and replaced them here instead. OK, so if you do the same. OK, now it's important to note that you only have to do this for your primary domain. So if you're wondering, well, what about my other domain, if you intend to have one? Well, don't worry about it for now. We'll deal with that in the uh, vmail map which we're going to cover now. OK, so with that done, we have the second line to add now, which is SNI maps. The SNI map is a mapping of domain name to the private key and certificate file for each of our domains. So it's how we tell Postfix where the key and certificate is for each domain we're going to be using. The map file we will create shortly. But for now, we just need to tell Postfix that this file exists. This is where it is and we need to let it know that it's going to be a hash file. And that's how we do it. We have hash and a colon. OK, so a hash file basically tells Postfix that this file is going to be converted into a database hashed database file, which Postfix will be able to read much more quickly than the text file. And we'll have to do that hashing process uh, in a few minutes. But just make sure that you have hash colon forward slash etc forward slash postfix forward slash vmail underscore ssl dot map. Now, actually, the name of this file doesn't really matter because it just has to match the file name that you're going to give this. But I suggest you keep it the same and just make sure that the the name of the parameter here is TLS server SNI maps. OK. OK. Now, with that done, then we just need to save our file and exit out of the nano text editor. So control O, save, control X to exit. The next thing to do is to create that hash file that we have just pointed postfix to. So let's do that now. Let's open up nano again and let's create that file that we're telling postfix we're going to be using. So sudo nano etc postfix because this is where we were pointing postfix to and then vmail underscore ssl dot map because that's the name of the file that we told Postfix was going to contain our domain to key relationships. So in here, I've actually got two uh, relationships already. As I mentioned, I'm currently demonstrating having two domains running on my same Raspberry Pi. Okay. 
So we can see here um, that uh, I just want to mention actually that your file will probably not exist. <laughs> That's the first thing I want to mention. I almost forgot. So this file doesn't exist by default. It's not something that comes with Postfix. So you, when you do this, you're going to create a blank file if you don't have one already. Um, I knew there was something I wanted to mention. Um, so your, your text editor, when you type this in, will likely be blank, okay? Now, this is again because I'm demonstrating to you a working email server that's already been set up. So what we have in this file is one domain per line, where the first line has my domain, followed by the private key, followed by the full chain certificate, with a space between the two. So if we just highlight this to make it a bit more clear, we've got my domain mail.single-entity.com followed by a space, followed by the location of the PM private key file, followed by a space, followed by the location of the full chain file. Okay, so these are actually the exact same paths as we defined in the um, main configura configuration file for Postfix. And then we've got this again beneath for another domain. Uh, I don't own this one, but I borrowed it, mail.utilizeme.com. And then there's a space followed by the path to the key, followed by a space followed by the path to the full chain.pem. So depending on how many domains you have, you could have many, many, many lines in here. But in my case, I only have two. So make sure you add your, uh, your files in here as I have done, and we can then save the result and leave the text editor. So finally then, we need to hash this file in order to turn the file into a .db file, which Postfix will pick up. To do this, we simply type the following. So type as I type, sudo postmap space minus capital F space, and then hash colon forward slash, and then just the file. So etc postfix vmail underscore ssl dot map. Okay, I was using tab there just to fill in a few bits to make it a bit quicker. When you're happy with that, press enter. It will almost instantly complete um, and then you're finished. So the, the next thing to do, of course, is to restart Postfix as we've made a change to the Postfix configuration file. We've done this many times before. sudo service postfix restart press enter and it's always a good idea to check that it is working so after that I then replace restart with status press enter and there we can see postfix is working as it should now before we wrap up this video on the postfix setup for SNI we are going to check that postfix and the setup we've done is indeed working correctly by running a couple of commands so these two commands are going to check that our certificate pointing is indeed correct. So I suggest for every new domain that you add, you do this just to check that indeed Postfix is picking this up properly and pointing this domain in particular to the correct certificate file. So type as I type, open SSL space S underscore client space hyphen connect space localhost colon 25 space minus or, or hyphen um, server name or one word space and then followed by your domain so for me mail.single hyphen entity.com space followed by hyphen start tls so remember there are two t's it's start tls so there's two T's there in the middle, or three T's all together. Space SMTP, and press enter. Okay, so what we're looking for here is the certificate name or the CN value. So what we want to see is the CN value in the output message is equal to the domain that we're querying. So if I go up, I need to find the CN value in two places. So let's go up, let's go up, let's go up. Here we go, so cn equals mail.single-entity.com uh, in one place, and then it should say it elsewhere. There it is, mail 
www.single-entity.com. This is the certificate. So if these two match, and if you do this again for all of your domains, and they match, you're good to go. Okay, so in each case, you should see this matching. Okay, so with that done then, we have basically completed our postfix configuration for server name identification, and we're left with just having to finish off by performing some configuration for Dovecot. Now, as this video has got quite long, we'll cover the Dovecot configuration in a nice short video uh, in the next video. So check that out straight after this. Okay, so thank you for watching. As always, please do like and subscribe if you found this useful. Subscribing is the best metric for interest I have. And if you'd like to contribute to my work, get support and see videos before they're released on YouTube, please do see my Patreon account. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next very short video on setting up Dovecot for SNI.